Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Musetta Lambert. Thank you for being here today to watch this presentation. Um, so I'm a research scientist with Environment and Climate Change Canada, and I'm also a visiting researcher at Wilfrid Laurier University. Uh, so today I'd like to give an update on a project I've been undertaking with my colleague, Dr. Joseph Kulp, who's a professor at the Wilfrid Laurier University. Um, so this is a SIMP funded project number 210, creating a stream biomonitoring program along the Inuvik Taktiaktak and the Upper Dempster highways. So the main objective of this project is to establish a stream biomonitoring program along the ITH and the Upper Dempster to try to understand the impacts of road disturbance in the Arctic on aquatic health of streams and creeks using key indicators of environmental stress. So the outcomes we are attempting to achieve by the end of this project are to produce important information on the severity of ecosystem impacts in streams associated with road development in the Gwich'in Settlement area and the Nuvialuit Settlement region, and implement techniques that can be continued and passed on to community monitoring groups to assess the impacts of disturbance on aquatic ecosystems using key bioindicators moving forward into the future, um, and including protocol uh, that's established by the Canadian Aquatic Biomonitoring Network. I will be describing the work that we've completed thus far, um, so the preliminary sampling season in 2019, as well as uh, some of the work that we were able to accomplish in 2020. This work would not have been possible without the preliminary research from the late Paul Sparling and substantial initial and continued help from the Amariac monitors. Um, Wilfrid Laurier University, Environment and Climate Change Canada, and the Government of Northwest Territories have also been important to the success of this project thus far. Um, funding from all of these agencies, including support from the SIMP monitoring program, um, have helped us cover travel costs, collaboration, student and fieldwork costs. So prior to um, my involvement in this project, uh, discussions within the Fisheries Joint Management Council um, with the White Mountain Consulting Agency um, led to completing an initial survey of the streams along the ITH in 2017 or 2018, and the New Valley Game Council had concerns related to aquatic health of the water bodies along this newly constructed highway. Um, so worries included increased sedimentation caused by erosion during periods of high stream flow in the spring and fall, as well as permafrost thaw in the summer causing further road slumping and erosion. Uh, in addition, there was evidence of that there was redirected flow along roads, as you can kind of see uh, water pooling up along roads in the top picture and, and sediment entering streams in the bottom picture. Um, all of these pose a threat to stream health and aquatic ecosystem functioning. So we proposed to use sensitive bioindicators, which is really just measurements of things such as organisms that can detect environmental change um, that have been successfully used in other areas of Canada um, through the Canadian Aquatic Biomonitoring Network Protocol. So this includes measures of water quality um, that can show differences in nutrients and contaminant levels in streams, including um, measurements of things such as mud and sediment eroding in the streams. Uh, measurements also include looking at the aquatic insect communities that are living in the streams. Um, so why do we look at these insect or bug communities? Um, they're pretty easy to sample. They have a wide range of tolerance to pollution. So some species show up in great numbers and thrive in areas that are polluted, while some are very sensitive to pollution and disappear or decrease in their numbers during disturbance. Also, they're very important to animals higher up in the food web, such as fish and birds. In some studies, bugs and streams have been shown to make up a very large percentage of diet of certain trout species, um, including fish such as Arctic grayling. Lastly, we wanted to measure something that was also extremely important to food webs within these streams, um, and is it a good indicator of aquatic health. So this is breakdown of materials such as leaves and algae in streams that provide energy um, up to things such as bugs and from there to fish. As you can see in the diagram on the side, um, the bottom of the food web consists of things such as leaves, algae growing on rocks, and underneath that you can see stages of decomposition of a leaf that it would enter a stream. This energy is cycled up to finally reaching top predators such as fish in these systems. Here's a video of uh, a few of us in a stream up along the ITH, just showing how easy it is to sample bugs within the stream system. This is called kick net sampling, and the video was taken by Paul Laboon of Oceans North.
So we selected sites along the Inuvik Taktiaktuk Highway and along the Upper Dempster, three in each region, for our preliminary sampling season in 2019. The results I'll present here today represent some of our findings from this initial field season. In this example, you can see where we selected impacted sites directly downstream from the ITH in Hans Creek and where we selected our reference site in Hans Creek. So in 2019, our preliminary sampling year, we worked with the Mariuk monitors to select sites along the ITH and an environmental monitor from the Gwichia Gwichin Renewable Resource Council along the Upper Dempster um, between Segeshek and Inuvik to select sites and conduct sampling there. We had a staff member from the Environment and Climate Change Canada's Canadian Biomonitoring Network Group um, to uh, help us on site with teaching some of the fundamentals of each sampling technique to our monitors. In 2020, we had planned to continue this on-site training and we're working with the cabin group within Environment Canada um, to offer some training and certification workshops, but this was delayed because of COVID. However, I was able to work um, with Kurt Rubin, who coordinates the Joint Secretariat's community-based monitoring program to lead some virtual training webinars with the Minuxiot and the Emeriuk monitors from within the New Valuet Settlement region. They then were able to lead the field sampling campaign this year for the project, installing and retrieving our data loggers, collecting water quality samples, and installing cotton strips that we use to measure breakdown in streams. They also took many recordings of habitat characteristics along the streams, including things such as in-stream habitat and riparian vegetation community structure. So we'll start off going over our main findings by talking about the water quality measurements that we retrieved in 2019. Um, so I've included some values here for some of the measurements on this table. Uh, so these include things such as turbidity, um, total phosphorus or TP, total nitrogen or TN, calcium carbonate, which may be related to road dust, as well as um, temperature and dissolved oxygen. But instead of going through all of these numbers, I'm just gonna summarize by saying that we didn't find any significant differences in these major nutrients or water quality variables um, between the upstream or the reference sites and the downstream or the potentially impacted sites. And all of the measurements that we recorded were um, below the federal environmental quality guidelines and the Canadian Environmental Quality Guidelines for the Protection of Aquatic Health. However, these samples were collected in August during a low flow year, and it would be nice to be able to collect samples at other points within the year, such as spring and fall. Um, we currently have some samples collected in 2020 from the Ameriac monitors that are being analyzed at the University of Alberta that will be included in future presentations. So this slide shows the, the results from our cotton strip breakdown measurements. The downstream sites from the road or the potentially impacted sites are represented in green and the upstream or reference sites are represented in orange. So we found a very subtle, um, and this was not significant, um, pattern of slower breakdown rates at the downstream sites compared to the upstream sites. One of the interesting things we noticed was a trend of slower breakdown rates at the mo most northern sites and faster breakdown rates at the most southern sites. This may represent a latitudinal pattern potentially related to things such as temperature within the streams, but warrants further investigation. One thing that would be potentially required to take into consideration in future biomonitoring projects would be to use this tool um, in a way that takes latitude uh, related variables such as temperature into consideration. The photo below the legend showing cotton strips in various stages of um, breakdown can be related to the previous photo I showed of leaves in various stages of breakdown, as it is, cotton strips are commonly used in ecological studies as an index for something similar to organic matter like leaves. So now to go over some of our main findings related to the bugs. Um, so we didn't find any differences in our measurements related to bugs between the reference and the potentially impacted sites downstream from the road. However, given that the number of sites we sampled was low in our preliminary design, we hope that we can expand to more sites in the future of this program. Instead of going through all of the different measurements related to bugs, I just wanted to give you one example. This shows the average number of bugs at our reference sites upstream from the road in orange 
and our um, impacted sites downstream from the road in green. The bugs included in this graph represent the mayflies or ephemeroptera, the stoneflies or plecoptera, and the caddisflies or trichoptera, which collectively are sensitive to pollution, so are used quite frequently in biomonitoring programs as an indicator for environmental stress. Uh, here is a short video of one of the insects, uh, stonefly, that um, you will eventually, you may see along um, a stream at some point during the spring or summer. So this is a way to move oxygen across the gills. It does these little push-ups. So we didn't find any difference between the reference and the potentially impacted sites at these streams we sampled. Um, however, we did see a uh, slightly higher number of these three groups of bugs at sites that we expected to be impacted, so the downstream sites. Um, so this would likely not be the case if these areas are heavily polluted. So I just wanted to go over some of the key outputs and deliverables from our project thus far. Um, so firstly, after our field season was completed this year, we had a short write-up about the project um, contributed to the Joint Secretariat's homepage. Um, so you can visit this webpage uh, noted here, jointsecretariat.ca, to read more. However, however, I think at this point you might have to scroll down a bit to find it. Um, so we've also had a productive year and a half or so um, with presentations related to the project. I presented a, at a government and community stakeholder um, cabin-related science forum in Yellowknife in October 2019. We presented on our project and had discussions regarding cabin training in the north at this conference. Uh, I also gave an update at the December 2020 Inubi Alwood Game Council meeting after our appearance at March 2020 meeting had to be canceled due to COVID. Um, at this meeting, I did get some good suggestions for um, alterations to our study design in the coming year. And um, I also gave an overview of our project in collaboration with for a co-authored presentation with um, Joseph Culp, Kurt Rubin, and the Amariok Monitors at Arctic Change 2020, which is an international conference that was held in December 2020. Uh, the water quality data should be available shortly through the McKenzie data stream. Um, we have a grad student that will be uploading this. Um, the stream habitat and bug data will be available to any northern organizations or communities that would, would like to see the data or are inquiring about the data, but will be able to be accessed online through the cabin database um, in 2023. Uh, data from other projects across the country, however, can be found open to the public um, at the link provided below as Cabin now um, operates an open access to the public database. So the ongoing success of this program really relies on the on-the-ground partnerships with the community-based monitoring groups. Just wanted to read this excerpt from an article on the Joint Secretariat webpage related to our partnership with the monitors. Uh, the program has opened up ongoing training opportunities for the monitors to take lead in projects like these, which complements the strength Inuvialid partnership maintains with associated government and academic bodies. So I'm very happy with this collaboration so far, and I hope to see it moving forward into the future. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to provide more training opportunities and, and have continued discussions about potential cabin certification opportunities. Um, so while our findings are preliminary, uh, there is currently, based upon the sites we've sampled, no evidence of worrying ecological differences between the reference upstream and the impacted downstream sites using the cabin techniques and looking at sensitive bioindicators for environmental stress. The techniques used represent ways that managers and environmental monitors can monitor water bodies that may be impacted by disturbance to decide if mitigation measures should be recommended in a region or along a stream. 
So some future directions for the project include um, enhancing these training opportunities that I've been talking about, increasing the distance from upstream sites from the road as our reference sites, just to really see if the sites we have recommended as reference are truly reference or not, um, as well as additional water quality sampling from different times throughout the year. And, um, and we have a grad student on that wants to investigate um, usable Arctic grayling habitat in areas downstream from road impacts. And with that, uh, I just want to thank you all for watching my presentation and open the floor to questions. Thank you.